Gordon is ninth. 7.7 seconds back. McMurray goes to the lead. Eight laps to go. The defending winner is out in front. And does he have enough fuel and has he saved enough to get to the checkered flag? The thing is that none of these drivers and teams have run this far today. They've been making these pit stops well short of this, so they're not exactly sure. They know what they've been picking up, but have they saved enough in this run? And again, Jeff Gordon, one second a lap faster than these guys. Seven seconds back. Eight laps to Eight go. Eight laps to go. <laughs> it's getting good. The thing is, when Jeff Gordon catches all these cars, if they can all make it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to slow him up a little bit trying to go through them. See, nice shot right there. You just saw yeah. Jeff Gordon coming into it. Here comes Trevor. Doc Punch reported he would have to pit with seven to go. Come on down. Come on down. stop for Trevor Bain. It'll be right side tires and fuel. They are so impressed with how much he had learned here the first time at this racetrack. Running fourth when he had to make his final pit stop and gaining. But it's going to be uh, too little, too late for Trevor Bain. Right side, he's down and away. Menard staying right with McMurray. He, he wouldn't have dropped back behind him to draft him a little bit to save some fuel, would he? Uh, that's very possible, but they both picked up. They're both under that 54-second bracket now, down in the 53-70 range. So they have picked the speed up. Well, they get some good information from their crew chiefs that are watching all these lap times. They can see, you see Jeff Gordon just coming off of turn four. We'll look at the speeds at the line here. You can see 166 for the leader. Watch this one. 168 miles an hour. And he made two more passes of cars right there on that lap to get himself up into the fifth spot. Let me know I'm trying to get. Everybody in front of us is a spot here. Everybody's a spot. Jeff, they're all saving. They're all the leaders. It looks like they're in slow motion here. So you know Jeff's just driving as hard as he can trying to get to their bumper. Yeah, and he's almost a second and a half faster right now than what they were. Jeff's even picked his pace up just a little bit. And you see McMurray has put just the slightest bit of gap back to second place Paul Menard. This could turn into a wild last lap. There could be people running out of gas and a guy charging to try and catch them all. How about McMurray, Dave? Alan, conversation between him and Kevin Mannion, his crew chief. Did I need to save two laps or am I half a lap short? Kevin told him you're half a lap short. He goes, why? Because something happened or because I saved it? Because you saved it. So the crew chief, confident that he's gotten him there, maybe down to the half lap as Gordon keeps coming. Jamie? Slugger Labby telling Paul Menard, we're going to turn you loose here in another two laps. He's saving fuel right now. Wait till he opens it up. They're also reminding him it's the same engine, same strategy ahead of him. Vince? Five of Mark Martin is running third, and Martin has been told by his crew chief, Lance McGrew, I need you to save me it's a little bit of fuel. Run the same pace you've been running for four laps, and then you can go. This is the fourth lap. Look for Martin to be able to put it to the ground and go to the finish. What is going to happen in these to final go. four laps? Leaders in some lap traffic. 32 of Mike Bliss just ahead of go him. Go ahead, go. We're turning loose. 24 is two seconds faster. We can't give up. Okay, the race is on here, guys. Here yeah. goes Paul. That was his radio. He was told to go. He's gone to the lead. Paul Menard. Yeah, he was just told that Jeff Gordon was almost two seconds a lap faster these last couple of laps. You can see him well in the picture now. They got to go. They got to go now, whether they have enough fuel or not. If they're going to win this thing, they can't let that 24 catch him. Gordon is behind Regan Smith, Mark Martin, Jamie McMurray, and Paul Menard. There he goes by Regan Smith. Gordon up to fourth place. Can the four-time champion charge all the way to the lead in these final three laps? Jeff Gordon has picked his time up back under 53 seconds a lap now for Jeff Gordon. McMurray going to get passed by two as he tries to save some fuel. Martin to second, Gordon to third. Still a long way to go. Five miles, more than that. 
More like seven and a half miles to yeah, go. Jeff Gordon should be able to get by Mark Martin here shortly. If he doesn't have to waste any time getting by Mark, and he's not at all before they get to turn three. This is Jeff Gordon's race to win right now. To second place. He not only has more fuel and enough, he has fresher tires than Paul Menard to run these quick laps. These fans at Indianapolis are all on their feet trying to see if the young man who made his racing name on the short tracks of this area can win a fifth Brickyard 400. Paul Menard leads, Gordon is second, two laps to go. Okay, Paul Menard's gonna have to run the most perfect laps he's ever run in his life to try to hold that 24 car off. I'm not sure it'll be enough. Yeah, looks like that he's catching this traffic, Paul Menard, in a good spot. It's going to be up the back straightaway, not to impede his progress any at all here. There's the two crew chiefs. <laughs> man, I know what they feel like. Which is? Oh, man. You can't even breathe right now, Alan. Yeah, Menard Slugger, look at Slugger. He can't, he's like, he's got to get my heart started again. Come on, man. Lap traffic in the way. See, Gordon get everything that he can right against the wall out of turn three. Mike Bliss in the 32. Yeah, Paul's going to need some help from this car. He needs to move over. Coming to the white Biggest flag. Biggest race of your life, bud. Drive the hell out of it. Come on. One lap to go to win the Brickyard 400. Bernard dealing with lap traffic. Gordon oh. trying to close in turn one. Bernard has cleared out. Gordon's right, got to deal it. with the traffic. He's got enough looks fuel. Good. That might be enough now, yes. Looks, looks good so far. <laughs> this is going to be the biggest day of Paul Menard's life. But does he have enough fuel to get to the finish? Gordon clear of traffic. Setting up for the finish. Final corners. Good corner here. With such a long racing history at Indianapolis, they'll kiss the bricks together now. Paul Menard wins the Brickyard 400. Wow. Oh, this is huge for Paul Menard. He started his career driving for me, and I, I couldn't get it. And a park home run, buddy. That's what we talked about. Good job. Gordon gave it a run, though. What a finish. Did. Yeah, and what a great job Paul Menard did. He saved the fuel that he needed to, and when it came time to drive the car, he got the speed out of it that he needed. Congratulations, that young man. Thank and, you, everybody. And what a place to get your first NASCAR Sprint Cup Series win. Unbelievable. Richard Childress has to be very, very proud of his driver today. Paul, the first driver ever to get his first Sprint Cup Series win in this oh-so-difficult race. Continuing a theme of the season, 2011, of first-time winners. Fourth driver to pick up a trophy this year for the first time. And what a family moment this will be at Indianapolis Motor Speedway for the Menards, Jamie. John Menard up here on the pit box. Can't believe it. John, this is where it all began for your family. What does this win and this place mean to you? For Paul to get his first win here, it's unbelievable. He's a, he's a good boy. He followed this place all his life. I, I just can't believe it. I, I am, I, I'm afraid I'm going to fall off this pit box. I just don't know what to do. You've it's always wonderful. been so involved on the sponsor side. What does it mean as a dad watching your son get the job done? My heart is going 1,000 miles a minute. I, I don't know if I can take it. I just, it's unbelievable. It's just, a wonderful place, you know, our whole family spent so much time here. And now that they have Paul's first victory here, it's, it's incredible. It's just incredible. <laughs> this man and this family have helped so many drivers at this very place in the Indianapolis 500. You get to go celebrate in victory lane. We're going to go celebrate pretty hard, I think. <laughs> All right, John Menard, there's going to be a party. <laughs> another half lap we might be talking about a different winner at this year's Brickyard 400 but Jeff as you're clicking them off and passing one by one and they're updating you on the radio of how much you've got to make up what's going through your mind as you know how close it's going to be 
Well, you know, when, when the, the biggest key to me was uh, when we came out of the pits ahead of Harvick. I thought that was huge, you know. So Alan did an awesome job. I mean, first of all, what an incredible drive in Hunger Chevrolet. Right from the drop of the green flag, this was a, a lot of fun today. And uh, I had a blast driving, and the car was awesome. And so when we got in front of Harvick, I thought, okay, you know, I thought that was the guys we were going to race. And then when Alan started telling me there were guys going, uh, going to try to stretch on fuel mileage, all I could do is run as hard as I could. And I was a little bit loose at the beginning, and uh, we got some traffic, and the car finally tightened up. And then we were really clicking off some laps. But every time I got to a car that was saving fuel, they kind of helped me up a little bit and, and made it a little more difficult for me to pass. So I, I knew that we weren't quite going to get to Paul. It was really about running out of him running out of fuel. So we tried as hard as we could to put pressure on him. And I got to say, as disappointing as it is to, to uh, not win this race, it sure was great to run that good, and I got I to gotta congratulate Paul Menard. I don't think there's anybody in this garage area that appreciates a win here at the Brickyard more than Paul. He grew up here as a kid, and I think that's pretty, pretty special, pretty cool. Quickly, how bad did you want it on that last lap, knowing you were that close? Well, I wanted it really bad, you know, leading up to that, but on the last lap, I knew I was too tight behind him that if he didn't run out, I wasn't going to get him. You know, I needed a few laps to work on him. Well, I guess I need a few more laps for him to run out of fuel, too. Great performance from Jeff Gordon in the 24 today, Alan. 167th career Sprint Cup Series start, Paul, and you get the win at the Brickyard. What is this moment like? Uh, you know, I've been coming here since I was a little kid, and uh, my dad's been trying to win this race for 35 years, and so this is, this is for my dad, uh, Brad Tooney, back home. A lot of emotions right now, but these guys, you know, Slug Lab and all these guys just do a, a hell of a job, and um, man, it's, I can't believe we won Indy. Paul, this morning I talked to your crew chief, Slugger Labby, and he told me the one thing they had going for was this fuel mileage, and it ended up working in your favor. What was it like when he told you, you're free, go for it? I started you know, saving a little bit and uh, maintaining with the five and with the one, and then I started backing up a little bit more, and they kind of kept, uh, kept backing up with me. So I knew that we saved plenty of fuel, and then uh, you know, I was more worried about the guys that, that pitted four fuel, and they are coming hard. and. Um, you know, we're, we're keeping Slug kept telling me where, where Jeff was and, and how fast he was coming. Uh, it set me loose with three laps to go, and the car was really good. Clean air is so important. I mean, we stayed out one caution. Uh, no tires, took off. Got, got in the back, had a pit road penalty, got in the back, and couldn't do anything. So clean air, uh, ECR horsepower, uh, Nibco's on the hood. Um, you know, just, uh, you know, Menards and my dad and everybody have been coming here for eight, 35 years, and it's, uh, it's Indianapolis. We talked to your dad up on the pit box. He's so emotional, as you said. He's been trying to win here for 35 years. The money that he's spent supporting drivers, the heartbreak, and now the victory. What does it mean for your family? Uh, it's big, you know. Uh, my first year was here, here was 1989, that I can remember anyway. And I think I was here when I was, when I was like three or four years old too. But um, just spent a lot of time in the garage area. Um, I think I, I didn't miss any 500 from 89 to 2003. I was here for the inaugural Brickyard 494. Uh, just a really special place for, uh, for my family and myself. Um, thanks for all the fans. You know, Indianapolis is, this is the greatest racetrack in the world. We've got the best fans here, too. Paul, when you signed with RCR, what was the reality that maybe you would have a chance at making the chase? Because now you are a wild card. We are a wild card. Uh, you know, we've we've had an up, to, up and down year. We've had fast cars, been struggling to put the deal together. Um, you know, be consistent week to week. Um, you know, but we, it's not a lack of effort. You know, Slugger, uh, he's in the shop seven days a week. Or you know, when he's not at the track, he's in the shop. And uh, all these guys just bust their tails. Have beautiful race cars. ECR horsepower is fantastic, and uh, we got we got uh, great fuel mileage too, thanks to ECR and Timmy Petty. Such a humble driver. Paul Menard celebrates his first ever Sprint Cup Series victory. His dad, his mom, his girlfriend, Richard Childress, Slugger Labby, his crew chief, all here ready to celebrate. Reba McIntyre's even in victory lane. One of the drivers who visited him in victory lane, the guy who has won here four times, who almost was able to get win number five today, that would be Jeff Gordon. Is it always chaotic? Uh, no, we weren't quite this orchestrated. We just, of course, they've, they've got it now down to a science with all the photographers and everything. But, you know, we just kind of got out there and did it on our own to start with. But. <laughs> I think Jen Roster, that's just Paul's girlfriend beside him, celebrating with him. Got to be so proud of him. Absolutely.